tonight on BCN Weekly News. For this week's special report, unchanged water filters and several water fountains on campus, all the details coming next. Also, mask pollution, the silent side effect of the pandemic, coming up. And another COVID-19 Halloween, the CDC's recommendations for trick-or-treating this year. All of this and more coming up soon, tonight on BCN Weekly News. Live from BCN Arts Studio in Berea, Kentucky, this is BCN Weekly News. Good evening, and welcome back to another newscast of BCN Weekly News. My name is Cameron Williams. In our top story, BCN's own Esteban Reyna takes a look at students' concerns about unchanged water filters and the water fountains on campus in this week's special report. Some students have brought up concerns about several water fountains on campus that need their filters to be replaced. We brought these concerns to facilities management and here's what we found. According to some Facebook posts, some students are concerned about the unchanged water filters in some of the fountains on campus. BCNR checked these claims and found out that up to the recording of this report, at least eight water fountains needed filter replacements. One in the Mac building, one in the Forestry Outreach Center, one in the Alumni Building, two in Danforth Residence Hall, and three in Seabury Residence Hall. According to the manufacturer's website, the newest LK water filling stations on campus need to have their filters changed once they have reached 100% of their life. And some websites warn that not changing the water filters could change the odor, test, and even the quality of the water. In response to an email request from BCNR, the Director of Facilities and Engineering, Shane Wilkerson, reassured students that there are no concerns with the quality of the water, since the utilities company to the campus says the water is safe to drink regardless of the source. Wilkerson also emphasized that students should keep sending work orders to fix any issues with the facilities on campus. In his email, Director of Facilities and Engineering Shane Wilkerson confirmed that Facilities is planning to have all water filters changed in the coming weeks. Reporting from Seabury Residence Hall, Esteban Reina, BCN Weekly News. Thank you, Esteban. It is estimated that the COVID-19 pandemic generates up to 7,200 tons of medical waste every day, much of which is disposable mask. We turn to our reporter, Shania Swan, for more on this. Shania. Thank you, Cameron. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began last year, nearly 7,200 tons of medical waste has accumulated from protective equipment to help prevent against the novel coronavirus. A Berea College student from the Office of Sustainability tells us what they have to say about this problem. A year ago, the idea that disposable face masks, gloves, and wipes could become a global environmental pollutant was not a pressing concern. Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE for short, was seen as an essential for preventing the spread of COVID-19. No one imagined just how much of it would be needed for so long. Then production exploded, and now litter is inescapable. Globally, 65 billion gloves are used every month. The tally for the face mask is nearly twice that, 129 billion a month. That translates to 3 million face masks used per minute. Yeah, well, from a sustainability standpoint, like our office at least is definitely encouraging the use of like cloth masks, like the one I'm wearing, not like the one you're wearing. Um, I mean, any point in time in which you can avoid using single use items is like a plus. And most masks, I mean, people don't save the, you know, unless they're like the really good quality ones with the filters, people really don't save the single-use masks. Um, I mean, just yesterday, my friends and I were walking in Brushing Fork Forest, and somebody had hung a single-use plastic mask onto a, um, a tree. We're told the amount of medical waste could be dramatically cut by learning how to properly dispose of disposable masks and by using instead reusable masks. In other news, Halloween is approaching this upcoming Sunday on October 31st. 
With the spooky season upon us and COVID-19 still a major concern, families are once again asking for guidance on whether traditional Halloween celebrations and activities can be done safely. Last year, health officials discouraged going full on with Halloween festivities, citing concerns over social distancing, even outdoors. However, things are more hopeful this Halloween since the development of a COVID-19 vaccine and appearing on CBS program Face of the Nation, Center for Disease Control Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky spoke about Halloween safety this year amid the COVID-19 pandemic. She said she's hopeful for trick-or-treating and small groups outdoors will be safe, but advises people to avoid large parties. She quotes, if you spread out doing your trick-or-treating, that should be very safe for your children. Oh gosh, I certainly hope so. If you're able to be outdoors, absolutely limit crowds. I wouldn't necessarily do go to a crowded, um, uh, crowded Halloween yeah. party, but I think that we should um, be able to let our kids go trick or treating um, in small groups, and um, and and I hope that we can do that this year. Remember to stay safe and take the precautions to protect against coronavirus. Share with us on our Facebook page and let us know how you plan to celebrate Halloween this year. My name is Shania Swan with BCN Weekly News. Back to you, Cameron. Thank you, Shania. Coming next on BCN Weekly News, a new creative space for students opens up on campus. Where this new space is located and how to participate, keep tuned for more BCN Weekly News after this break. <laughs> What's your mask say about you? It says you care about others. So mask up and save lives. Are you having trouble keeping your dog or cat? Don't surrender your pet. Let the Kentucky Humane Society help. Our free pet helpline offers advice on whatever animal issue you're experiencing. The Healthy Pets Clinic provides low-cost vaccines and basic veterinary care. And our SNP Clinic offers affordable spay and neuter. If you're interested in training your dog, we offer behavior classes as well as private training for puppies and adults. Don't give up. Improve the lives of you and your pet. Go to kyhumane.org for help. Fact. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Millions of doses have already been given in the United States, and these vaccines have the most intensive safety monitoring in U.S. history. If you have questions, get answers from a reliable source, cdc.gov. Thanks for staying with us. Opening up on campus is a new creative space for students to learn and collaborate on original projects. Our reporter, Matt Carmack, has more details on the new space. computer science professor Jasmine Jones, the makerspace area is a place for students interested in workshop, design, crafting, and other artistic endeavors to work freely. I sat down with Jasmine Jones, T.A. Sabira, for more information about the space. Yeah, this place is open for everyone, so everyone can come and use these uh, resources to build their own projects, and um, yeah, and they should be feel free to reach out to us. Um, yeah, and we will always help to use this equipment. It's not something that's very hard to use. Uh, sometimes it might be confusing, but if they come, it's, it should be available to them. Yeah. Uh, we have our Instagram page and we have our website where our tea hours is listed. It's also um, on the front door. Like We have our tea hours so you can come uh, during our tea hours and yeah, we will assist you. As stated, if you or any other students are interested in learning or expressing creatively in the center, either message Jasmine Jones at jones 2 maria.edu or come visit the lower level of the Danforth Technology Building besides the graphics lab. For now, that is all the information we have received regarding the new center on campus. We will let you know any further updates or events coming your way. For now, this is Matt Carmack located in the TAB building. Back to you, Cameron. Thank you, Matt. On behalf of our news team, thank you for watching BCN Weekly News. I'm Cameron Williams. For more coverage, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Berea College News Radio. And watch our show online at www.bcnnewsradio.com. Good night.